was involved in a, a fascinating project, um, not last January, but the January before. Um, it was initiated by a, a festival in Cumbria, in England. Um, the project was called All Along the Wall, and they invited five songwriters and two poets to live together in a house under the shadow of Hadrian's Wall. <clears throat> we were there for five days, and the remit was write a 90-minute show all about Hadrian's Wall and its surrounding areas. And then on the sixth day, <coughs> come out of the house, perform the show in front of a live audience, and we'll record it for an album. No pressure there, then. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I could see how it could all go dreadfully wrong, you know, if the personnel in the house, you know, clashed mm. in any way. But I have to say, we got on like an absolute house on fire. It was fantastic from, from the very word go. Nice personnel, though. Yeah, uh, I, besides myself, the songwriters were Jez Lowe, Boo Hewardy, yeah. uh, Ruth Notman, and Rory McLeod. And the two poets were uh, fantastic poets, Kate Fox and Elvis McGonagall. So um, it was an incredibly prolific time for all of us. We were so inspired. It's great writing for a project because... You don't have to find your own inspiration, it's actually handed to you on a plate. You only have to look at your surroundings to, uh, to be inspired. Um, before I went into the house, um, I phoned up the curator of a local museum. It's a museum and an archaeological site, and it's called Vindalanda. It's a huge site. And uh, I asked her if she'd got any interesting stories that might, you know, inspire a song. And... Um, because Vindalanda is, is, is this amazing uh, archaeological dig site that you can pay £50 for and you can go along as an amateur digger, so you can go along for the weekend and you can work with professionals. And uh, she, said, she told me a fantastic story. She said um, that a guy had come along, he'd never done it before, he paid his 50 quid, and he said, will I find anything? And uh, she said, you know, truthfully, Generally speaking, people find something, they'll find a bit of pottery or they'll find a coin. Uh, well, I've used a bit of artistic license and I've said it was with the first dig of his shovel, but in fact it was with the first dig of his shovel on the second day that he uncovered the most valuable and the most important archaeological find ever in Britain. And the sadness is he had to give it all back. <laughs> But I love the idea, I love the idea that just with one dig of your shovel you can connect yourself back to a, a moment in history, uh, 500, 5,000 years ago, I love that idea. So that's what inspires me. It's a bit of a chorus for you, and there's some choreography to go with it. You don't even, <laughs> you don't even have to get up for this, this is great. There you go, I, I put my hands on my shovel. Oh, you do it like that. Yeah, too. I, I do it like that. You can't dig a shovel holding it like. Anyway, but I, I, it's only a little <coughs> shovel, Chris. It's only a little one. Oh, fair enough. It's not like a spade. It's a little oh, shovel. Okay. okay. And on my shovel, <laughs> I put my shovel into the ground. Earth. Earth. <coughs> I wrote it. I can change it any time. <laughs> I'm drawing an arc. Now, for all the dyslexics in the audience, it's left to right, okay? Arc across the... you'll hurt yourself. Arc across the ages, a bridge, a bridge over time. Or time, yeah. You're right. impressed, aren't you? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that. I did oh, that. Oh, I've been doing that. You do that, I've yeah. been doing that for six months. So, so that arc can do that, and we'll all do that, okay? <laughs> That's the next song, Kate. Just hold your horses. <laughs> Whoa there, big fella. Okay, and then, and then, and there's another little bit, that ooh bit as well. Which goes, ooh, 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 Have a go with this.
time.